Hello everyone, welcome back to the class of macroeconomics. In today's lecture, we are going to start to talk about the Zolo model. So to begin with, the topic that we are going to cover today are as follows. We want to talk about how to set up a model and then we want to discuss how to set up a simple version of model to capture important growth fact we observe. And then we will talk about how to go for it and what are the key features of the model. So then the outline for today is as follows. We want to talk about the setting up of the solo model and then we are going to go through the computational details for solving the solo model. We want to tell you why we want to focus on the per capita variables and we want to talk about how to solve the system of the equations of the solo model and then I want to explain to you why when we focus on the capital stock it can capture the entire dynamics of the solo model for all the variables. Finally, I'm going to show you a solo diagram, which is a diagram that combines all the information of the solo model and help us pin down the steady state capital stock. And then we are going to talk about a very special case of the solo model, which is no population growth and no technological growth. So you can think about it as the review of what we talk about for today's lecture. Finally, I want to talk about the model features in detail and I'll explain you why this model has this couple model features. So now let's begin to talk about the basic setting of a model. So for the basic components and uh, assumption of a macro model, usually we include the following factors. We have household, we have firms, we have market, and some others that characterize the important condition of an economy. So for the household, we make assumptions that the household make decision based on the principle that they maximize the utility. And then under this principle, the household make choices about how much they want to consume and how much they want to save, how many hours they want to work and how many hours they want to have leisure. And then the household's decision made are based on a constraint of their budget. When we are talking about the household budget under the macro model, a lot of time the budget is related to the budget constraint over the lifetime. And the household not only make decision about how much consumption they want to make right now, also about the consumption in the futures. And in fact, the future consumption relates to the savings because the saving today will become the consumption tomorrow. The household also make another decision for computational purposes. That is, they need to know what is their utility function. The utility function describes the preferences of the household and that will be the principle for making up the decision choices for consumption and saving and work and leisure. And then for firms, we also make assumption they make decisions and their decision is made based on the principle that they want to maximize the profit. So then the firm choose how much input they want to put into the production process. This input can include the capital and labor, entrepreneurship or the lens. But a lot of time for simplifications, we focus on capital and labor. Other than that, we also need a production function to describe the production process that the firms adopt, such that the firms will be able to produce the output. Then another component that we want to look at for a macro model is about the market because we have household, we have firms, so then we have supplier for the capital and the labor. We also have the demander for the capital and labor. So then the supply and the demand meet in the market and then we assume that the quantity supply need to be equal to quantity demanded at the end when the market is in equilibrium. So it turned out that we are going to have the equilibrium for all the input that is for example, the capital and labor. And we also have the equilibrium for the output. 
because whatever amount of goods that is produced need to be consumed by the household eventually. Otherwise, it will be just as if dumping the goods into the sea. For in addition to that, we also need an equation to link the investment to capital. Because when we look at the household problem, we say the household makes a decision about consumption and savings. And the saving will turn into investment because we know when we are looking at the goods market equilibrium, we have the saving and investment diagram. The supply of the goods market equilibrium is related to savings and the demand of the goods market equilibrium is related to the investment. So then the savings of the household will then demanded by the firm and the form of investments. And then once we have the investments, then we need to convert the investment into the capital. And then the capital will be used into the production. So then we need an equation to link the investment to capital. And the equation we use a lot of time is the law of motion we learned before. And I'll show you that later on. So then once we know the basic components of a macro model, then now we want to start to look at the solo model. Because the solo model is a very simple version of a macro model, so we make a lot of more assumptions to make the model simpler. For example, for the household, we do not assume that the household make the consumption and the saving choices based on the principle of the utility maximization. In fact, under the solo model, we just assume the household are exogenously given a saving rate, and then the consumption will be set and the saving is set. We assume that under the solo model, consumption is a fraction of the output, and the S in here is the saving rate. In addition to that, we also make another assumption to make our life simpler. That is, we assume there is no labor leisure choices. So then how could it be? Well, we assume that if everyone is in job with 12 hours, then that individual will work for 12 hours. So then we don't need to um, decide how the individual are allocating their time to labor versus leisure. Then the life is simpler because we are making less decisions. So how about for firms? To make the life easier, we assume that the firm take whatever amount of factory input available in the market and then put into the production process. Therefore, we also no need to have the firm making the profit maximization decisions because they just take, go to the market, acquire all the factory input available in the market, and then put into the production process. So then what we need for firm is that we need to give the firm a production technology. And a lot of time, it is the model designer that assign the production technology to the firms. And then later on, we are going to have an equation to characterize this production technology. Finally, about the markets. Given that the firm take whatever amount of factory input available in the market into the production process, therefore the factory inputs attain the equilibrium automatically. The household just provides the savings and the firm just take all the savings converted into the investment and then accumulate it up as capital and then put it to the production process. No equilibrium is needed to be discussed for the capital. Same thing for the labor, given that the household do not make any labor and leisure choices decisions and the firm take whatever amount of the labor available in market and put into the production process, so then the labor market also attain the equilibrium automatically. So the only thing left that we need to look at to talk about equilibrium is about the goods that is produced. In here, we assume that the goods market attain the equilibrium, that is, whatever amount of the good that is produced need to be either consumed or invested. 
as you may see in here, if you recall what you learned about the national income identity, we say that the total output or income of a nation need to be equal consumption plus investment plus the government expenditure plus the net export. In here, we make simplification such that there is no government in here, so we drop it out. Given that it is a closed economy, we are not talking about anything related to international trade. Therefore, we do not have net export in here. Therefore, the goods market equilibrium condition will be a very simple version of the equation that is whatever amount that is produced need to be either consumed or invested. So now let's move on to the assumptions for the solo model. Under the solo model, we are given a couple parameters. We are given the saving rate, given the population growth rate, given the technological growth rate, given the depreciation rate, and given the capital and labor share. And then based on this assumption, the story behind the solo model is as follows. We have an environment that the household and the firms are the agents in this economy. And then there are markets for different factorial input as well as outputs. And then the household are making the decisions, the firms are making the decisions, at the end, the market attend the equilibrium and we assume there is no frictions. And then based on this story, we have a couple key features of the solo model. It has constant marginal product of capital in the long run. It has the constant capital and output ratio in the long run. In fact, these two features are linked together. That is because if we assume Cobb Douglas production function, and if you may recall what we learned about the Cobb Douglas production function, we know that under the model, the marginal product of the capital equal to the capital share multiplied by the capital to output ratio. Therefore, if the marginal product of capital is constant, and then it implies that the capital share multiplied by the capital to output ratio also need to be constant. Given that we assume the capital share is constant and it is a given parameter, therefore the first point boils down to the second point that is, we will be able, we need to have the feature that the models ha need to have, that is, the capital output ratio need to be constant. In fact, this feature meets the data feature for the U.S. That is, if we look at the U.S. data in history, we will find out their marginal product of the capital is relatively constant over time. But in fact, if you look at the Taiwanese data, it will be different we do not observe constant marginal product of capital in the long run. In fact, this number falls over time. But given that this model is developed in the early 1950s, so it makes sense that it based on the US data rather than based on the data feature of Taiwan. Other than that, the model implies that when we assume different parameters, the economy may result in different income level in the long run. However, with the same parameter, if we are given different initial condition, that is the capital stock, it will result in the same income level in the long run. Later on, we are going to show you why this model has these two features in detail. So now let's begin to look at the equations of the solo model. So under the solo model, we need to have equations to characterize the behavior of different agents in the economy. Also, we need to have equation to describe how does the market attain the equilibrium and how does the investment convert it to capital stock. So to begin with, we have the equation characterize the household decision. As we mentioned earlier, we say under the solo model, we make a very simple assumption, which is the household decide to consume a portion of their income. And this portion is exogenously given as the saving rate. So in here, the CT is the consumption, the YT is the output, then the S tilde is the saving rate, which is the parameter. Then we also have an equation to characterize the firm's production process. Under the solo model, given that the firm takes whatever amount of the 
manufacturer input available in the market as given and put all of them into the production process. Therefore, the firm no need to solve the profit maximization problem under the solo model. Under this equation, the A is the production efficiency, the K is the capital stock, the LT is the total labor that put into the production process, the theta is the capital share, which is a parameter, and one minus theta is the labor share, which is again a parameter. So this is the only equation that characterizes the firm's production process and decision. Then we have another equation that characterizes how does the capital be converted from investment. We say that it converted follows the law of motion, and here the IT is the investment, the delta is the depreciation rate, again it is a parameter value that will be given. And then we say the capital stock next period equal to 1 minus delta the capital, which is the capital after depreciation from last period, plus the investment, and then that will become the capital stock in use this period. Finally, we have the market clearing condition, which is about the equilibrium of the goods that is produced. We say whatever amount of good that is produced need to be either consumed or invested. So these are the four equations characterized under the environment of the solo model. So now we want to move on to talk about the computational detail of this model.